Hey everyone, welcome back to the Color Brown Podcast. I am your host, Negra. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us on Instagram. Before we start, you already know I gotta give a shout out to my sponsors, LA Kush. Make sure you use promo code Negra40 at the LA Kush Sunset location only. And also, you already know, royalty honey. Keep it hard, guys. On today's episode, you have my husband, LA Icon. <laughs> and on the boards, we have my son, Marlon. He can't hear. I mean, you can't hear And him. baby Cupid. And Cupid is in the house as well. So we have my whole family here. Um, so today we're going to be interviewing my husband. Um, we're going to hear his story. We're going to hear everybody always says, hey, Negra, why don't you interview your husband? Well, guess what, you guys? We're going to do it here. We're going to do it right now. And we're going to start. So tell me, where are you from? I don't mean the gang. Where did you grow up? Um, how was the inside of your house, your mom, your dad, sister, brother? How was that for you? Fuck. I am from the first city established in the county of Los Angeles by the name of El Sereno. It was originally called Farmington. I obviously wasn't alive when that happened. Fun fact, though. First city. Um, from El Sereno, I grew up there until I was mid-20s or something like that. In the beginning, from like ages one through five, I believe my mom was working hard. She worked in the U.S. bank building as an accountant. The Northridge quake happened or something like that, and it jeopardized her job or somehow or another. I don't really know how my mom lost our house, but we had a house uh, in the hood, and she lost it. And so I think I went to like third grade in La Puente. For like, yeah, I think I just went to third grade in La Puente, maybe didn't even finish it. And then we came back to El Sereno in third grade, I guess. You know what I'm saying? My brother did not reside with us. I am the youngest of three children. We all have different dads. Um, My dad wasn't around per se. I think he left when I was like in like around one or two, maybe. My earliest memory of them is fighting. I could recall clearly that they were fighting in the living room or what have you. Pretty crazy. Um, my sister. So you have a brother and a sister. I have an older brother and an older sister. Uh-huh. It's weird to see you asking me that, knowing that you know that. But yeah, well, go ahead. I, mean, I get it. I, I feel it. I feel it. Let's go. Um, how far apart are you and your brother and your sister? My brother, I think, is maybe a little less than 20 years older than me, maybe. Maybe 15. Oh. That my sister's like 10 years older than me, I think. That's my girl. Is she 10 years older than me? Yeah, no, not 10. I think she's like 46. Oh, probably. So maybe so like around, seven years old, like so seven years or something like that. She's older than me. Point is. So, yeah. Okay. So you guys moved back to Sedano. You guys were in the third, when you were in the third grade, obviously your brother and your sister are older and your, uh, no, your dad wasn't in the picture. Did you have your grandma, grandpa? So when we moved back to El Sereno, my, uh, we lived on a lot that had two houses on it. It shared one driveway. One house was one house. One house was the other. And they were both cool size houses, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. They're normal size houses. I guess. How many rooms? Like two? One, two, three. One, two, three small rooms, like small apartment sized rooms. They're old homes. Okay. Each of them both had uh, like three or four rooms. So, so when I was a young boy in the first house before she lost it, I had two rooms because I guess my brother moved out. My sister had a back room or something like that. I don't know. So I had a video game room or whatever. And then, like I said, in my early early adolescence five or something she lost a house we went and moved into an apartment when we came back we lived with my grandma my great grandma because my mom's mom died so my mom's dad's mother my grandmother alice is where we resided for quite some time so in the house where there was like one and two houses right there uh it wasn't like a duplex they it's weird to explain but they're their own separate big ass houses and yeah Okay, so you're, and your mom was, oh, was your mom like a, always working? Tell me uh, how your mom. She was definitely always working and she definitely liked to enjoy herself after work. I've never seen my mother do drugs to my knowledge, but she always smoked cigarettes and she always drank. She didn't wake up to a beer, but she definitely went out a lot. 
A lot, a lot. So you were par- practically raised by your grandma and your sister? Uh, yeah, I think that's safe to say. Um, and you said your sister, your mom always partied, always, always, always. To my knowledge, yeah. I don't know what kind of abusive. Well, I know uh, I'm not too sure about my dad's. I mean, my dad, my brother's father, how his relationship was with my mother, because I mean that was way before my time. My sister's dad, I believe, was extremely abusive to my mother, like bad, to the point that my uncles intervened on countless occasions, to my knowledge. And uh, by the way, my mom is one of 13 children. Some of my aunts are resting in peace. Uh, A couple of my uncles are resting in peace. Uh, One died doing life in prison. Another Another one did countless, countless years in prison as well. They're popular gangsters, but that's neither here nor there. Um, yeah, so she comes from a Chicana, super duper Chicano background. She, we are, my great grandma's parents, I believe, brought us from Mexico before it was Mexico to Texas, which would be Cahuila or Chihuahua or something like that. So I'm like my grandma. My great grandma, my grandma, my mother, I'm fourth or fifth generation. Fourth, fifth generation. Uh Mexican American. Okay. So you're there, you you're 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 in the third grade, you start going to school there. Obviously you went to elementary there first, second, or whatever, you know. And um you're just like playing outside. No, yeah, so I'm still from the era where you would play outside, play catch outside breaking windows outside like we're playing baseball outside we're playing basketball outside we're playing hide and go seek we're playing in the hills because i don't know if you guys are familiar with el sereno but it has hills a lot of hills um we would go to the backyard climb up the hill shit like that you played sports i also played sports i played basketball baseball uh for whatever reason they didn't want me to play football or what have you but i played basketball and baseball a lot my name is in the Hall of Fame at my park. Chill. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, you played outside. You hung out with your friends. Normal. You did normal kid things. Uh, you went to a junior high? Uh, I did go to junior high, and I didn't last very long. I did sixth grade and seventh grade. I was expelled from the district, and I tried to continue in various places. There's a school in East L.A. called uh, next to the Maravilla Projects called Mujeres y Hombres Nobles. That that's like a popular school for East LA kids that are like super. I went to school there for a little while, got kicked out of there. Uh, I went to the occupational center where they had like a classroom of like ten kids, got kicked out of there. But like, why were you getting kicked out? Um, shit, I was just a bad kid. And sixth and seventh grade, I was already ditching, smoking weed, doing bad things, doing all kinds of bad things that already. In sixth grade, I think I already had been to juvenile hall because I assaulted somebody outside of my apartment complex. Oh, so you started going to juvenile hall at a very young age. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I've spent some so you, fair amount of time in juvenile So you went to juvenile hall, so I'm, sure, I'm assuming you've done camp as well. Yeah, I've been to, I did Central. I did Sillmore. I never did LP or was that the only other one? Yeah. Yeah, I only did Central and Sillmore. I've been to camp. I've been to Challenger. Uh, which is like what Cat McNair or some shit like that. Um, so I obviously you're my husband. I know you have a, a son. Uh, how old were you? Because obviously you're already a teenager in and out of juvenile hall. Huh? So at what age did you have your son? So I had my son when I was 16, I believe, or something like that. And obviously, I know that you use drugs, hard drugs, when you were younger as well. Yeah, I uh, smoked a gang of P dogs. So you smoked crack. Uh, I smoked crack mixed with weed for sure. And you were really, 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 really deep into it. Mm hmm. Like super, super deep. Like Is that the part where I'm supposed to go super deep? <laughs> like. <laughs> I mean, nah, so we would drink a lot. We would steal like a lot. We old. would smoke a lot. We would smoke a gang of P-Dogs, me and my boys. Um, shit. The first time I got high, I think, was like in fifth or sixth grade. I remember rolling down the street with my homies, uh, Peter, True, uh, Rest in Peace, Vital, 
maybe the homie Clemente, aka Bust, a gang of homies. And uh, I remember, oh, some fool Rome. I remember Rome. Rome was part of the circle. Uh, we smoked, and when I blazed it, I think I had like a minor panic attack because I was like, oh shit, I'm so high, and I ran home. That was my first experience with weed. And they saw me the next day at school, like, what the f happened to you, G? And I was like, I got too high for I ran home. Or I don't know what excuse I gave. Okay, well, we're going to take it just a little back just because something popped into my head that your sister always makes fun of you. Well, not makes fun of you, but you always used to say, like, um, about your mom, like, you would always have to call the hospitals, uh, like, the jails, like, every day, like, you would call, like, you would be crying over your mom. So she would go and... Sometimes I would be home. Sometimes I would be my aunt's house uh, who lived near a bar. Victor's in Alhambra, I believe it is, at that time. I don't know if that shit still exists. I hope it don't. You hate it? I hate that shit. Um, yeah, she wouldn't come home. As an adult, I could only imagine what she was doing after 2 a.m., you know what I'm saying? Respectfully speaking, of course. Because those of you that are watching that know me and my wife and what have you know my mom is terminally ill at this moment. But that's neither here nor there. The point is, in her prime, she was f***ing to it. You know what I'm saying? So um, I would call the bar. Obviously, the bar's closed. So, Or she wasn't there anymore or who knows what. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what made me think to do that. But I would call the hospitals. I'll call the police stations. Shit like that to see Damn. if she was there. All the time. Probably, yeah. I don't remember. Oh, because you were you were like in your like I was young. I was still small. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You weren't a teenager yet. You were a... <laughs> no, when she I was mean, gone, we were getting doing our own shit. <laughs> okay. So you had your son at sixteen years old. Um, how was that for you? Obviously, because you're a teen, you're on drugs. I remember when obviously you know my baby's mom. So uh, when I spoke with when we when she told me she was pregnant, I don't know if we me and her had a crazy f***ed up relationship. You know, what I'm your saying? kids, you know. Yeah, I mean, I guess we were kids. But even then, like she was I don't think she was a bad person, but she misbehaved with her parents as well. Obviously, me, I'm right there breaking up crack on the top of the entertainment center. My mom walking in and she's too short to see what's on top. She's like, what's up there? I'm like, oh, nothing. I just got my hand up there type shit. So. I'm already doing bad things, doing bad shit, being scandalous. And uh, I don't know. I probably just thought scandalously of her, too. Of your mom? Of my baby's mom. Oh, okay, your baby's mom. So I remember when she got pregnant, her parents came over, and I believe my mom was right there. Well, of course, because why the fuck did they come over? Um, and, she, and they asked her, like, my mom asked her, are you sure it's his type shit? I mean, I can see your mom saying that, though. <laughs> To my to their to and keep in mind they're a, a nice Italian family. Shout out to them. They definitely held down my son all these years. So shout out to them. I, I can definitely see your mom asking that. Your mom is your mom is terrible. I love her. At some point or another. At some point or another, my we live next door to the manager. So keep in mind, I still have all my friends coming to ditch. We're smoking big time weed in my pad. Foods are getting drunk. Shit's erratic. Um, my neighbors have a daughter who was like two grades older than me. Um, believe it or not, I was a very slender, young, good looking man in my younger years. And needless to say, I had all. The so uh, my neighbor and I were making out on her bed one day. I was, I guess you could say I was cheating on my baby's mom. Sorry if you're seeing this, boo. Um, <clears throat> what had happened? You said that? <laughs> She's going to probably be like, you mother. Uh, so basically my man, the manager, the parents of my neighbor, AKA the manager's daughter walked in on us and she was on top of me. Ah. <gasps> And yeah, needless to say, that plus all the complaints of the weed smoke and the guys and the drugs and the homies would peel cars, or whatever, all kinds of stolen property would be in my house, stupid shit like that. So needless to say, they kicked us the f*** out. So they so kicked your mom out of the apartment. They kicked my mom out of the apartment. And for whatever reason, I guess she was going to rent a room. She was only able to rent a room on her own. So I was kind of homeless. You know what I mean? You were 16 or 15? 16-ish, 15-ish. I don't f 
anymore. Okay. Honestly, between 16 and 17. So it was either I go stay with my baby's mom and be home like a good boy early or do whatever I wanted, which is what I pretty much ended up doing. Mm -hmm. Which was you being in the streets. Absolutely. Um, how long were you in the streets? Like, what did you do? Where did you sleep? Like, um, I would have... I think I couch surfed a little bit here and there. I've slept uh, when we were at the boxing match. Uh, boy, my my good friend Bless, he was uh, he's told me I'll never forget that uh, you used to sleep right there in front of the DWP on the bus bench. I don't know why he was drunk. He was just going down memory lane with me, and uh, not a lot of people know that. But I mean, I said it in other interviews that I I've slept in the streets before. You know what I'm saying? Um. I slept at my baby's mom. Eventually, we had the baby. I was still doing stupid things. She would have to go find me on the block with the homies or what have you. We'd be f***ing around right there. They'd be there. Fools would be getting cracked out and smoked out and whatever else right there. Uh, Yeah. I eventually broke up with... Well, we broke up. She broke up with me because I started dating or started messing around with some girl that lived on that street where the house was that we kicked it on. The Asian one. He likes Asian girls, just so you guys know. Hey, Asian girls, don't be hitting my man up either. They love me too. So basically, um, I think I came home from a, a drunk ass night and I uh, had hickeys all over. And I was laying in bed and I didn't realize I had hickeys all over. Oh, you're it. And my, terrible. And my baby, my BM was like, hey, what the F is this? And I was like... What are you talking about? She was like, you have hickeys all over your body. And I was like, shut the f up. No, I don't. That's impossible. That's your lying face right there. And I looked and I was like, oh, f I don't know how that happened. I was drunk. I mean, I obviously f so my bad. Get the f out of here. You know, the whole get the f out. Obviously. Vibe. I mean, what would you expect? I respect it. So then I was homeless again. And for the longest time, I would do the bus bench shit, but I would sleep this girl lived in the nice condominiums in our condominiums in our in our hood. It's called the Hilltop Colony. So in those condominiums, like any condominiums, there's stairwells, nice ass ones, right? Because they're brand new as shit in the hood. So I would sleep in the stairwell. Sitting down? Uh, laying down, sitting down, whatever. Sometimes the guards would wake me up and tell me to scram. Sometimes they would just step over me. Oh, shit. They were cool because uh, remember... We had that block on lock and the guards knew us because they would drive by us. Got they it. would see us. We would be right there in front of the gate. They would have to let us in because obviously I'm dating the bitch. We would all go up there, chill in the little park area type thing. Like we, it was a vibe. Okay. It was a major vibe. And those fools also knew people up there. One of our homies also lived up there. One of my good partners, Steven, rest in peace, smoked a gang of boulders with that fool. Dang. It's my boy. <laughs> Never straight, guys. Never straight. Don't be wasteful. Put it in a blunt. Break it up. Whatever. So, <laughs> you're back in the streets. <laughs> you're with this Asian girl. Fire. Um, You're already like 17 years old. I'm 18 now. You're 18 years old now. Oh, uh, yeah. And I eventually started uh, <clears throat> renting out a garage from my boy, Richard. Okay, big billete. Cause what did you used to do to like make money? Uh, sell weed and sell crack. Okay, so that's how you made your money while you were in. The I street. mean, I wasn't a big time crack dealer over here selling fools cookies and crazy shit. But you made. But I was making an attempt at selling weed to be the best weed dealer I could be. Okay, so that you so you were on the streets, but you weren't like broke. You were just trying to get yourself together. Uh, I would say I was broke still. Okay. Re like realistically speaking, uh. Throughout my life, my dad would occasionally fuck with me. I mean, he wasn't completely, completely like zero gone. Like he would try to pop in on like here and there a birthday or a holiday, maybe pick me up to the point where I was no longer able to be uh, controlled. Like your dad's coming like. Let that fool come. You know, I don't know. Because sometimes he wouldn't come too. some of those times, you know, you know, the normal vibes. He was doing his shit, whatever. No hard feelings against that dude. He's all right. He comes and sees the baby now. So good for him. But uh, 
long story short, where were we? I was renting the pad. How did I make my money? I was kind of broke. You rented your, uh, you rented a garage at Richard's. I was penning, I was, yeah, I was, Cupid, that is not for you, sir. Long story short. Close the refrigerator. Thank you, baby. Ooh. Have yeah. Martin open it for you. So long story short. Martin, are you switching? Um, yeah, he is. Not at this moment, obviously. <clears throat> So how did I make money? I was broke. Yeah, so I tried to sell weed. And eventually, this is still before weed was legal. This was right when you were able to get a medical license. So I pivoted from trying to sell drugs like grams and shit. I, tr I tried to sell packs to the dispensaries. Ah. And um, where I was going that is my dad tried to give me a job when I was like 18-ish, 19-ish to be a, no, 18, to be a mortgage broker or a loan officer. So he gave me a couple of bucks. I went and bought some suits. I mainly stole all the suits and shirts and ties. You know what I'm saying? From Ross and places like oh, that. Oh, so you were a good stealer. I was a good thief, yes. For what I needed. So uh, one day I I knew a gang of people already. I sold a half a... I was at a taco stand <clears throat> in Alhambra or somewhere and i went to uh buy some food right as i was buying the food a meth head that i knew came and bought like a half a gram off of me and in my briefcase because i was a loan officer <laughs> i had like whatever amount of weed i had i think it was a couple of packs like literally just a couple but two packs back then was like six grand or seven grand almost so and I had a scale on me and it was one of the packs was quarter pounded out like I had it kind of ready to go do whatever I was going to do after I ate. And after I sold this twerp to half gram, uh, the cops pulled up instantly. Oh, so they were probably watching. Uh, I don't think they were watching me. I think he ratted on me or maybe I don't know. It was just a weird, weird coincidence because I wasn't there very long. I didn't even get my food. So you were in your suit and you had your briefcase. Yeah. And they busted my stupid ass. And so I went to jail and I bailed out, got a lawyer and yeah. Did I, you go back to work as a loan officer? Yeah. How was that for you? How was you working for a loan officer? How does that even work? Uh, I was telemarketing. Ah, for the. I mean, I was, yeah, pretty much. I would try to gain leads for loans. Basically. Got it. Got it. Got it. And that lasted for a little while. And then uh, I went to jail for the weed. I don't know if it was that time or another time, but I've been to jail a couple of times for, for selling drugs or whatever. Okay. Um, and I've been everywhere for anyone that wants to know. I didn't go to prison, but I've been north, south, supermax, the towers, the 5,000 floor, the 2,000 floor, the 3,000 floor. Yeah. So if you've had your share of time inside the county, Joe, inside the county. Absolutely. Okay. I've met. Uh, a popular story is, well, I don't know if it's popular, but uh, you people it? that don't know Prime, uh, the homie Prime, Conejo's right-hand man, amongst many other things that he does on his own. Uh, I met Prime in jail. Which was like over 15 years ago. Yeah, easily. And I la when I landed in the Twin Towers, me and him were together for, for like six, seven months. Burpees, eating, around, whatever. And that's when you guys became friends. That's when we became definitely friends, yeah. Okay. And so I've known him ever since, whatever. I came out, he was like, oh shit, you weren't like... Because this whole entire time, I always rapped. Oh. Uh, what age did you start rapping? Probably like 7th, 8th grade. Mm -hmm. So during all that, I would be the cool guy to go to the school, even though I wasn't allowed to be at school i would go to school rap at nutrition you didn't even go to high school no i got my ged in juvenile no i got my ged in camp and camp before i was 18 like i was the baby had been born so i must have had been like 17 and i remember the same room i would get i got my ged in is the same room i would get special visits because when you're a kid with oh, so kid, you, you used to have visits and they would take the baby to with you. the baby yep. it happened how did you feel if you remember. Um, Cause obviously you're not all cracked out anymore. The little baby. That's a come I trip out. Uh, Cause Cupid looks like. Uh, my other son to me. Those visits were probably sad. 
sometimes he would be sleeping during the visit and I would just talk to my BM or whatever. Uh, sometimes when he would wake up, he would just play. He was detached because I wasn't around like that. For sure. Because I was doing mischievous shit in the streets. I was doing street shit. I would go to juvie. I would go to camp. Stupid shit like that. You know what I'm saying? She didn't like the bitch I was with, so I couldn't see the baby. And that whole scenario about that, uh, we were talking about it the other day, her and I, like I told you. Obviously, they, these fools have no f clues, so... Uh, I didn't get to see my my eldest son as often as maybe I would have liked. Uh, my BM says it's because I was on drugs. Uh, sometimes she didn't get along with the women that I was with. And we could do the blame game. She could have made it easier. I could have tried harder, et cetera, et cetera. But, I mean, my son knows I'm his father. I know he's my son, yada, yada, yada. So. Well, you guys look alike, so. So there's that. All right. So you're 18. You've always rapped. What when did you start doing your video stuff? Uh, so or how did that start? You taking pictures or however that. So goes. we always wrapped. At some point, I was still with the Chino. The Chino was doing makeup. She needed someone to take pictures of the models with the makeup on because she went to like a prestigious Hollywood school. Um, we were in a uh, Hollywood and Vine in those uh condos that are right there on top of the store, CVS, I believe. I saw somebody that had a vicious ass camera. I was like, how do you use this? I was like, oh, I could do it. I took some of the little weed money, bought a camera. I, I like I said, I'd already been rapping. Um, my boy Joey from Corner Block and all those homies over there, his brothers, um, my homie uh, Angel, all kinds of people. He had a studio, so we would take, I took pictures of all of them. Uh, and that's how it started. I started off as a photographer. Mm -hmm. And at some point or another, I realized I could make more money. So I started uh, getting a little soccer mom camera and started having my ex-girlfriend or whomever was with me at the time record me do the photo shoots, record me do a minor interview with the artist. And uh, yeah, that's what we where, did. And where would you put these pictures at? Like so when Facebook, you... MySpace. It started with MySpace okay, then okay. Facebook. The interviews would go on YouTube. That was already a thing, so I'd already oh, been YouTubing for 13 what, years. What years were these? 13 years ago, I don't know. 12 years ago, something like that. Something like that. Oh. 20, 2009? Oh, I was in prison. That's why I don't even remember YouTube until I got out. So, and that's how I met Cloudy and Demon. Okay. Your buddies, my buddies. I met Cloudy and Demon at some point. <clears throat> Cloudy bought the first camera that made videos. It was a Canon T2i. It's the one right there. Well, I bought one after it because he started trying to overcharge me to use the camera because he realized I was making bread. And uh, I got the camera that's broken right there. And it broke due to domestic violence. Damn. That's just so you know, you could get f***ed up too, G. <laughs> but nah, yeah. So um, long story short. So wait, so when did you start? So you were taking pictures and you were doing videos. And I when, was rapping the whole time. And you were rapping the whole time. But when did you actually start like rapping again, again, like when you got with the campaign or? Oh, yeah. Was well, that? no. So I was doing my little music that I was doing right there with my boys. None of that shit never really came out. I wasn't a officially part of their group. I was always just doing my own little shit. I recorded my own music at my house with my other homies. So that was cool. Whatever. We put out a couple of songs when we were kids, teenagers. Uh, I didn't start putting out real music until I got with Cloudy. And I was doing that shit with them. And yeah, I was part of, for like temporarily, I was part of Skull Camp. At that moment, I didn't realize that that was a super duper fucking logoed out group. Mm -hmm. And then uh, shortly thereafter, I got Zapata the Ghost and uh, I took him over there. And we started the campaign and then we became a pretty popular uh, rap group. A lot of people still say we should do like some kind of reunion. They said we were the West Coast Wu-Tang. A lot of legendary people f us. We were on the radio very shortly. Power 106 or somebody, I don't know who it was, said uh, we were top five groups in Los Angeles. Shit like that. But you were still taking pictures, doing videos. I was and still doing taking all of pictures that. and doing videos and everything. Yeah. Okay. And that's when you were like, what? How old? Well, I don't fucking know. 
Well, you need to know because that's However many I, years ago this was, I don't know. Because when you were with the campaign. 12 years, 11 years, 10 years. Probably like as the story progresses, like the year is shrinking. Or two, 2012, 2013. Because. Something like that. When I came for my first visit, it was 2013. So at that point, I was already filming. Uh, well, no, we were, already, we were already still full swing doing the campaign thing. Because yeah. I was shooting a video for Slum the Resident at the liquor store that you came to when I first met you. Mm-hmm. And I was with uh, my ex at the time. Yeah. So, yeah, that was like 2013. And um, obviously we met each other, but it was like nothing. <laughs> you were just still doing your music videos. So how many people have you filmed for? I've probably filmed over 2000 something music videos. Who was the first person that you took an you did an actual video for? Probably myself or my boy, Joey, who's from the hood. Fucking I lived with him also when I was very young, uh, briefly. Uh, him and his brothers. It's my boy. Um, I know that you always, well, not always, but I know that there's these, there's the popular rappers in LA that are very, very big now. Were you one of the first ones to actually film them? Oh yeah. So I took Concrete's first photos. I ended up filming Concrete's wedding and photographing it. Me and Con I've shot countless videos for Concrete. That's the homie, drummer boy, Y little Yogi, aka YB. Uh, the list goes on and on. I've shot Little Rob back in the day. Everyone, Frost. I don't know. If you were Mexican and in the years of 2008 to 2000, whatever, I was the video guy or photograph guy to get your shit from. And you've also been on tour with like for uh, King Little G. Stuff like that, yeah. Okay. So you've always been a rapper. I always wish you kind of rap sometimes. Um all right, so these all these years you just basically just been filming music videos because yeah, you stopped rapping. At a certain point, I stopped smoking crack, obviously, and I became like a normal human being, and I made all my money off of the photo photographing and the video shit. Okay. And very, very lightly the rap. Very, very lightly the rap. Yeah, like when you met me it was probably the peak of me collecting my my good checks. Okay, but mainly videography is what yeah because at that money. junction my boys were already i don't want to say falling off because that's like rude to say but life happened to some of them and they took a step back and i didn't have a regular job i had a million felonies at this point and it was hard for me to get a job and i never really did the warehouse thing or anything like that so it was just easy for me to continue doing the videos and the photos because i was actually doing very very well yeah, yeah. All right. So you've been doing that all these years. Yeah. Um, we we met in um two thousand well we started in two thousand and fifteen. Sure. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. This was sure. <laughs> uh how do you feel about us? How did you feel when we started first talking? So I dumped my ungrateful ex pretty cold turkey and i made a post because at that point i was super show offy you fools would hate me if you knew me back then and you were haters Ooh, fools would have hated me so badly um i'm sure some of you guys remember it and still hate me now but uh that's neither here nor there the point is i used to be super show offy so to be a realist i posted that i had broke up with my with my ex or what have you, and you and countless other people flooded the likes and comments and messages. Shit was lit. I know what happened. Super lit. And keep in mind, at this moment, I was like 190 pounds, going to the gym every day, twice a day, some days, getting to it. And I had a gang of bread. I was a popular rapper. I was the video guy. Like, if you didn't have a video by me, you weren't shit. It's like a fact. Uh, respectfully, guys. <laughs> and, um, yeah, more importantly, how did you feel, G? This is not about me. This is about you. We already asked me on the last episode. Uh, so basically. On the first episode of the Color Brown podcast. This is about you. So for me, I always do long-term relationships. So in that instance of her leaving and all kinds of different human beings flooding my DMs, I went an activated savage mode just did my
phone. You didn't tell, you didn't tell me you were talking to other girls until after. Anyways, that doesn't mean that's neither here nor there, guys. She's a fucking liar, Juice. <laughs> Ah, anyways, uh, so whatever, you're flying to Miami. How did you, what about you coming to Miami for the first time? Or like, what did you think? Or well, I didn't have anxiety yet, which is strange. But to think that I traveled all the way to Miami alone, I didn't know what to think. I just did what I did. I was down. You said, you kind of like challenged me like, oh, well, if you want to kick it, come to Miami. Like, Psh, that ain't shit to a real like me. That's exactly what you said. Mm, that's exactly what and I you did. Flew. Cause it wasn't shit to a real motherfucker like me. So you're flying to other places or what? To see girls? I was flying to other places to work. And whatever else happened there is whatever else happened there. No one knows. I don't remember. <laughs> we're definitely gonna be fighting after this, guys. Nah. Thank God okay. we're going to a family dinner after. <laughs> that's old shit. I don't. I don't care. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> so there's no more color brown it's because of this fool being a damn liar <laughs> anyways okay moving forward so that was like six months of us like going back and forth back and forth mm -hmm. and then what i was gonna go back and talk shit but fuck it and then what, and then what? you were gonna talk shit about me no it's fine and then so what uh, what happened um, in Miami, guys. We came to a we came to a point where I said I wasn't gonna continue visiting you like this if you wanted to stay there. Like we were either gonna be together or we weren't. Obviously, when uh that nice girl got pregnant, she decided not to keep it when I told her I was gonna be with you instead. Because at that point, I'd already narrowed it down because that she was getting old, telling all you guys the same lies. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> <laughs> You're showing off right now. <laughs> You're showing off right now. <laughs> you guys, this page is getting freaking red. He's showing off right now. We're going to let him slide. Don't worry, guys. So anyways, long story short, uh, I told her that we weren't going to be together, but that she should keep the baby. You said that was fine. and I was she, willing to be a stepmom. She I'm didn't okay end up keeping the baby, I guess. And yeah, so then we started to look for a place. We ended up finding a place. Uh, I made sure everything was ready for you guys to come home. You guys, I flew over there. I got you and we drove. Well, wait, so you're filming music videos and how did you start to rap? Like, tell me about the, I whole, rapping the whole time. I know, but tell me what, well, I guess you were rapping the whole time. I was rapping the whole time. Um, now, how consistent was I being? I don't no, I don't I mean whatever. And then how did you meet uh Toker? I met Toker through a mutual friend. Is my fucking jacket inside algae? No, it's not. No. My bad. That's anyways. Long story short, um I met them through the Empire Riders, you know, Diablo, of course. Big uh big lazy. I'm not sure if you ever met Lazy. You've met Shout Danger. Uh uh and Big Sanj. Big Sanj has a mutual friend with which is uh Lewis. Big punch. Has he used to call one, big punch. Punch. Oh, one, one punch. punch, one punch. Lewis, uh, Lewis hit me up and said, Toker from the Brown side wanted me to film. I just sound like another homie to me. I didn't know who Toker from the Brown side was because I didn't listen to Chicano rap. I listened to black rap or whatever. And yeah, and I told a couple people I was going to go film for Brown side. They were super wet. I was like, oh, this could be cool then. Fire. I went to Mexico for the first time. I met Toker. He offered me some horse. Shit was lit. I didn't do it. Uh, that was bone the horse because my ex at the time was like 30 feet away. You know how the houses were built right there? So we were in the front house when I first met him. She was at the back, like in the family house. <laughs> what, you're sad or what? <laughs> no, no, I'm not sad. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just listening to your story. <laughs> it's the truth. I fucking pulled up and he was like, hey, sucker. Well, maybe he didn't say sucker back then yet. He shortly after, but he was like, hey, what's up? Nice to meet you. You know what I'm saying? Anything you need, we got you. There was a whore right there. Okay, keep going. <laughs> He's trying to find out where he messed up at right now. He offered the bitch to me, and I said I was good. And then he told me he'll pay for everything except the alcohol while I was there. And I was like, okay, well, good thing I don't really drink like that. Oh, so you didn't really drink ever? Uh, I drank a lot during the crack years. Okay. Epic shit. 
stealing multiple bottles, infinite beer runs, whatever, whatever. But that's not getting drunk, spazzing out, flashing out on fools, doing stupid shit, being uh, causing self harm, all kinds of epic, crazy, ridiculous drunk shit. Uh, shootouts in the hood, you know, regular shit. That's why you don't like it. That's you know? a come I don't like to drink, no. Oh, I don't mean that. Like that's why you probably don't like to be around the drunk people. I definitely don't like to be around drunk people. I despise that shit deeply, especially in certain settings. Yeah, I don't even feel like reflecting on all the stupid shit that's happened while with drunk, drunk people, or with drunk people, or all the extra. I don't know. I've never really flossed the ex- extracurricular gang activity. Or any weird shit like that, or any parts of anything, anything like that, because it's not really, yeah, I don't fuck with the liquor. So, anyways, anymore. I mean, I could. I'll take a shot right now if I want. I've taken no, multiple shots right here, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Point is, is uh, we were with Tokes and I didn't drink that much, and if he drank, I'd have a shot with him. But he donated his kidney to his father, so only had one kidney left, and that's how come he didn't drink. Ah. It's not so much that he wasn't down, it's just that he only had one kid. Got it, got it. So, um, or at least that was the excuse he gave me, right? So, at one point or another, me and Toker are becoming super good friends. I'm over at one of his houses, me and his brother Clever. Shout out to Clever, wherever you are, Buckaroo. Me and Clever got some extreme memories together as well. Um, And he said, hey, Fu, I, I saw that mom song you made for your mom. That shit was fire. I think I'm going to remake it. I'm going to do something like that. I was like, don't copy my style g and because i would talk shit to him like uh, i talk shit I to him. Was already once i was already here because you didn't start rapping till i was already here uh that's for this yeah okay that's one of the times I, mean, I don't know if i went alone or where you were or what no because he had told me to rap already and i wasn't okay. i hadn't started yet got it right some shit like that i'll know so anyways oh yeah you're right i don't know what the timeline is on that Got it. point is he told me i was gonna rap and so i rapped and that was that and uh the rest is history i dropped a couple of videos he unfortunately passed away and when he passed away i decided i wasn't gonna push that album no more and get views from my homie's death because i didn't think that that was the right thing to do and how I, and i quit i quit the brown side and that's the last time you rapped uh, I mean, obviously, since then, I've done a feature with him or her or whomever. And I've done a couple of freestyles and maybe a diss track or two. But that's, fun. that's just a f- It's not that We're serious. Fine. Just a flex that it's highly, highly available to me whenever I want. That's it. Um, how do you feel about having um uh, a son, a new son? Because uh, being the fact that you weren't able to, that you weren't there for your other son, you know what I'm saying? Like, how does that, how does that work for you in your uh, head? Well, when I had the baby, that was tight. Pretty amazing. I've been trying to have a baby since, like, I got single, you know what I'm saying? Fuck. Uh, I mean, Marlon's right there. Do you really want me to say some reckless shit in front of Marlon? Like, you know? But anyways, point is, is, um... When I had Cupid, that was super amazing. And raising him, I feel guilt that my eldest son wasn't able to have me the way he has me, which is as a responsible adult, not on drugs and stuff like that. So So it's unfortunate. And I'm not sure how much my eldest son would even believe me when I tell him things like that or if he gives a when I say shit like that. But... That's definitely a vibe. I don't let it stop me from doing whatever I got to do with Cupid, but I'm telling you when I see this little fool, especially during some of these ages, like he looks just like, like right now, the way he looks right there is how he looks on my arm to me. This is what it is. So, yeah. Damn, I had something good to say and I forgot. Fire. You probably said it, I kept talking on purpose because you saw that I wanted to say something. <laughs> Um, what else? What about now? Where, like, where are you at now? Obviously, our son is five years old. Um, you've been filming music videos for all these years. You just probably stopped filming music videos probably about a year ago. And what was one of the main reasons why you wanted to stop filming mu- music videos? Uh, I didn't want to be available to the public anymore. And also, like, f- filming these young fools is fucking old. I've had so many. F- prop guns pointed at me 
That shit's annoying. I've seen... I've just... I'm over it. Like, you know what it is. We've had bitches dancing on our table for music videos. We've had them use our cars. We've... And when we had the Beamer, we've they used the Cadillac. And we've done it all. We've been on yachts. We've been in paradise filming videos. I, I've done so much shit. Like, I took it where I could take it. Because if I was going to get bigger and do better, then I would have done it already. For sure. And so more power to all the people that are video guys that had opportunities and took them and was able to make it to bigger places. You know what I'm saying? I don't know very many. I put a lot of video guys out of business in my time because I was undercutting their price because I refused to let anyone have any, a piece. You know what I'm saying? And now also another thing is the competition is intense. You know what I mean? Sure. Some of the younger fools that are familiar with the history of Latin rap are like, oh, shit, let me get a video from Icon. And people still hit me up to this day, but I just don't want to do it no more. I'm, I'm over it. And I charge a, a stupid price for me not wanting to do it. And I even tell them, like, yo, like, I could recommend you to somebody that's 10 times better than me. But they want a video from you. That's unfortunate because I'm probably not going to do it for less than $2,000. 15 dollars 15 so, yeah, that's what it is. But, uh, yeah, so at one point or another, obviously, through all of this, we met Duno. I mean, yeah, we met Duno when he didn't have what he has now. So that's obviously our real little friend, you know what I mean? Because we f him before he was all the way up. I have already had all of these other relationships over the years, you know what I'm saying? And so, you've met through the video stuff. Yeah, through my travels and this wonderful thing we call Chicano rap or whatever it is. Um, it got us to know Jumper. Shout out to Duno making the play, uh, getting you an interview. In your interview, I sat in because I am the creator of Indicted TV. And I just wanted to sit in. With, I'm no Jumper. I always told myself I'd be on No Jumper when I was a younger person, when No Jumper itself was blowing up. And I made it to No Jumper. And although we weren't on camera with Adam uh, at that instance, we obviously have whatever relationship we have up there now. I'm obviously a host. They pay me. It's an amazing thing. Do you feel that you accomplish everything that you set your mind to? Uh, Yeah, anything I want to do, I do it. Nothing can stop me. I'll borrow money. I'll do whatever I have to do to get what I need to get done. And it's not like I have selfish intentions. Everything I do is just to help build more things for me to help more people. I think. How do you like podcasting? Uh, It's interesting i've been interviewing people this whole time for me i don't feel like i do a lot of podcasting i feel like i conduct a lot of interviews i guess that's true but you've I been conduct doing a lot for, of interviews you've interviewed people before podcasting was even you want to know what i'm gonna give somebody their flowers right now because although i was doing interviews before them they were podcasting and that would be the latin legacy which is actually concrete it was Beretta. It was Concrete, his lady, Nikki. I think it was Burst Rock, the famous pop locker, a.k.a. Uh, Nikki's cousin, I believe. Shout out to all of them. Maybe Caveman. You know Caveman mm -hmm. had something to do with it. I've known Caveman forever as well. And, yeah, I think they were the first podcasters that I ever saw. Like way before. And I didn't even think anything of it. I was just like, oh, that's cool because I've always been tunneled, visioned out, doing my own thing. But they were doing it. I was always conducting interviews because that's how I started. I was doing the photo shoot with an interview. Got it. Got it. Got it. So, I mean, when people say, hey, you barely started doing this, shut the f*** up. Like, there's other podcasters that say they do certain things first. Like, let's be mad honest. There's nobody that's been in Chicano rap longer than me at this point. Other than Drummer, which we started about the same time, G, same time, uh, who could tell me that they've been before me? Mr. D, Royalty. But you filmed all of them. Frost, uh, Little Rob, like literally the generation before us are the only people that could say they've been longer than me. Some of these, oh, Blue Devil has been around as long as me. Shout out to Blue Devil. And Blue Devil was conducting behind the scenes scenarios. He Yeah, because he has all kinds of he like videos. podcasts to me. He's by himself, but he's podcasting and doing reactions and things of that nature. I conduct a lot of interviews, so I don't really think I'm a good podcaster per se. I just think I conduct a lot of high level interviews and when we are podcasting, which would be like the news or when me and you do our thing or when me and Juan do our shit. 
uh, which hasn't came out yet, et cetera, et cetera. That's podcasting. But I'm asking direct questions. Yeah, you're just doing it. You're getting to know a person. Yeah, podcast, I think, is used mad loosely. Okay. Because the color brown, we're not even podcasting. We're you're about to start podcasting. You don't know that yet, but you are. But uh, the point is, is what I'm saying is uh, you you conduct interviews on Indicted. Indicted is not a podcast. Indicted is a you conducting an interview. It's an expose. It's a f***ing thing. Got it. Um, tell me about the food community. Uh... It's only you've only been part so of the So let's food talk community. about the origins of my time at the food community because the food community was an Instagram page that I kind of knew about. I was more like towards the Latin B side of things, which is different because it's video driven. So shout out to Latin Beast. We know we know him. He's been to our house a lot of times. Yeah, him and his brother and all the homies. That's the homie for sure. Shout out to Vic and uh you know, Lokes. I don't know if Lokes is free or not, but free him. You know what I'm saying? Either. Anyways, um, I wasn't too privy to the food community shit. And uh, some guy had hit me up who's no long, who will remain unnamed. Probably kills him inside that I'm not going to say his name. And uh, he had a security service. And I was like, hey, I'm going to go to Blue Devils. Let me get let me hire you to be my security for the night. And um and I wasn't scared to go to Blue Devils because of Blue Devil, because me and Blue Devil are cool. I wanted him as a security so that way in case we needed to catch a legal body because we we're going to be live and people know where Blue Devils is, people that dislike me um, or don't. I just wanted to be right, you know what I'm saying? Because as a felon, I'm not legally able to own a firearm. And whether I have one or not... If I were to use a firearm that I'm not able to legally own, I'm going to go to jail no matter what. So why not have a security guard? So anyways, this individual is also a security guard. So I said, whatever. He couldn't make it on time. The owner of the food community, him, his flight was late, whatever. Uh, he invited me to be a guest on the first episode of the food community. And uh, later on that day, oh no, the first day, I think they interviewed two individuals whose interviews didn't come out unfortunately shout out to them if you're watching this uh you know who you are but uh point is is the next day they said why don't you come interview with us tomorrow so i took in them out or what have you and uh yeah the rest is history i pulled up i saw the rinky dink scenario that they were doing they're wearing professional video guys one of them is a professional photographer the other one juan uh, does what he does, which is strictly on his phone. He doesn't give a shit. He just had a little baby dream to start a podcast. That individual and him had whatever relationship because they had. Because started this food Juan, community Juan like years the, ago. Yeah, Juan started the food community, I guess, like, what, five or six years ago? The story goes. Uh, I, I, Something like that. I never heard of the food community until now. So, um, but obviously it's a big thing in the community, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And it does what it does. So, like I said, I pulled up, I saw their operation, and I was like... We could take this to a whole different level because at this point I was already at No Jumper. I'm not saying I stole any ideas from No Jumper. I'm just saying it's pretty easy to soak in a camera setup if I'm a Especially, seasoned video guy. Yeah, I was going to say that. And I'm really good at learning things very, very quickly. And also, not only that, Joshua and Michael and whomever else at the time was there uh were very forthcoming when i would ask questions they would just tell me like do it like this do it like that so i took everything that i learned from being there which i'm still there and uh i applied it to the food community and it is what you see now you know what i'm saying um unfortunately the individual that we started the podcast with isn't there for reasons that are neither here nor there i could say the truth and whether he wants to admit whatever those truths are which i've already said openly that's neither here nor there it's not about that but uh We've conducted some of the biggest interviews anyone in the podcasting slash interview game has done. Who is your biggest interview that you feel is your biggest? I will. I don't know. There's Jimmy from Rancho. There's Little Rob. There's Fluffy. There's Adam. Shit, even Crip Mac is funny to me. Um, I don't know. We interviewed you. I should be your biggest. I would have to say like it's Fluffy. No offense to other guys, but Fluffy is... Uh... Uh, I've interviewed Robert Garcia, famous fucking trainer. I'm about to interview him again tomorrow, low-key, for Shaka. Um, Tell us about Shaka. Shout out to fucking Shaka. That started because, if you want me to be honest, um, 
I think we're skipping some shit because technically speaking, I started indicted before I started doing the uh, the full community. Yeah, you did. So obviously we started indicted. That shit was cool. I don't remember why we were trying to figure out something for you to do, but it was something. And it happened and it went well. That's a very peculiar realm. You know what I'm saying? I guess I feel like it's kind of like more me, even though you do everything for indicted. It's fine. Shout out to all the homies that have participated in indicted. Shout out to the homies that have our back. You know what I'm saying? We highly appreciate everybody that participates in whatever shape that is. You know what I'm saying? But uh, the food community is great. It's a, It definitely is a unique experience. It's unfortunate that uh, I get a lot of backlash for decisions that are not my own. But... I am the face of the food community at this junction, so I'm going to catch all the heat for it. And I mean, realistically speaking, it is what it is because, I mean, I address all issues immediately. And it is what it is. I don't know what else to say. I'm not tough. I'm not too cool. I'm not too cocky. It just it just is what it is. Whatever people's different scenarios are with the food community it just is what it is. Whatever Juan and the staff decide to post is what it is. I've told them what they should and shouldn't post to avoid having issues with people, but as their prerogative, and I just got to stand on whatever happens. You know what I'm saying? I obviously have the my option to leave, but I feel like I've already been through so many things because of the platform that why the fuck would I walk away because someone wants to cry about a post? If some things are a little too far, I doubt there'll be anything that is too far. There has been one or two things that's a little too far that I didn't know that they were going to post that I had taken down. And that just is what it is. Don't cry to me to have your post taken down because I am not going to do that. It just is what it is. You know what I'm saying? We, that is a big thing, even in an, our relationship, because obviously I, I get mad over things about the food community. Um, I get mad about it a lot. Um, it is what it is, though. No, it definitely is what it is. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't affect our relationship sometimes. Uh, it definitely the, has its you know, times, you know what I'm saying? Because, because of people that cry over it, you know. And obviously, I'm always the one that wants to get crazy, guys. Obviously, he's the one that's like, no, babe, it's not even that serious, blah, 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 blah. blah. But to me, it definitely is serious. I mean, there are things that could escalate to weird ass levels, you know what I'm saying? But why? For one, it's usually never me that's participating in whatever's making these individuals mad or decisions that are being made to make them disgruntled or what have you. For sure. But um, it just is what it is. No, but I, I, I honestly, I feel that sometimes like because of posts, you know, that aren't even that serious. Um, it does put you my husband in danger and I that really does bother me this is probably something that they've never heard me say or anything like that you know um you know guys like making posts about you that makes me angry that makes me like hey or people saying hey you know f him we're gonna pull up at the end of the day you know that makes me like respectfully danger that you that puts my husband in danger and that's my family so that's the reason why I, sometimes i'm like ah oh, the full community you know obviously i know how much work you put into it i know all of that i know you know and it's like okay no you ain't gonna step back but i'm like f that you know at the end of the day for me a lot of people are going to try to get the attention they want one way or another. It's a, like age old story. When you're a kid, you try to please them. If it doesn't work, you're going to misbehave to get their attention. And you yes, know what I'm saying? Sure. I'm not saying you fools are babies or anything like that. I'm just saying, you know, we revert to our animal instincts. And if a smile's not going to get it, maybe a cry will. And unfortunately, I'm not your guys' parents to okay. give a fuck about the cries. You know what I'm saying? So um, if people want to with the platform that's cool if they don't that's cool if they want to use my name to try to gain clout that's cool uh, i only respond to people that deserve responses publicly but i do address most issues privately immediately and directly you do all right well and again i'm not tough i'm not trying to pretend to be tough it's just I'm getting old and I don't have time for bullshit and I don't like having things on my mind. So I deal with them as quickly as possible. Mostly all things get resolved. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because uh, we're all gentlemen, you know what I mean? Mostly. But with that being said, um, it's unfortunate. But anyways, to talk about Shaka, because I mean, we already talked about No Jumper because shout out to Josh put me on. Um, Whatever. 
That shit's fire. Some people don't like it. Some people do. Adam's actions definitely play a huge role on when people talk shit to me about no jumper. You know what I'm saying? It's not one thing, it's another. Some things are false as fuck. Some things are on camera. True. You know what I'm saying? Respectfully. But uh, that's neither here nor there. Uh, Shaka. I am responsible for bringing in the sponsorships for... Well, I'm not responsible, but I take it upon myself to try to get sponsorships for the things I'm a part of. Because I enjoy paying my bills. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, I reached out to Shaka and um, they set up a meeting. Shout out to Ben. Ben is the first person I spoke to. He said, come in. Shit was amazing. I walked in. Um, I took Smokes and Juan with me. Excuse me. When I got there, I met. Um, what time is it real quick, Marlon? 26 fire um so, so i yeah i met uh my bad for you those of you at home we just got a tight schedule but i'm not gonna rush or anything i just needed to know so i know but uh long story short basically what had happened was is i contacted shaka they they invited me to have a meeting the next day which was fire as fuck to me because i like to do shit immediately i don't like to have meetings about meetings about later i just want to get it done right now some people think that's a not a good way to negotiate but i don't give a fuck really i do shit my way and it's worked very well for me thus far so um we had the meeting with shaka we laid down whatever we had to lay down on the table and it is what it is now shout out to john shout out to shaka shout out to mr park shout out to ben shout out to tyson and anthony and everyone over at shaka and victoria that fuck with me heavy I appreciate the love and uh, support and faith. But what are you going to be doing there now? Um. So now, <clears throat> uh, basically, I'm going to be conducting interviews over there at Shaka. That has nothing to do with the food community. Yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with the food community. And what kind of interviews are you going to be, be uh, uh, thus doing? Thus far, I've interviewed uh, retired Laker Trevor Ariza. There's audio issue on the Benny the Butcher episode, one of the greatest rappers alive today. Uh, but we put that one out because that shit was too good to be true. The Trevor one was cool as fuck too, but like those audio issues were like un un uh it wasn't passable. So whatever. So uh yeah, we're conducting interviews with uh high level individuals in entertainment and business and other fields of fucking life. Nice. I might interview a doctor. I might interview the creator of Chinatown Market. I might interview a famous trainer. I might interview one of the best rappers from New York. I'm just going to be interviewing whoever I interview. You know what I'm saying? Um, they like the way you work, pretty much. Yeah. Over there is a more serious tone over here at the food community. I'm still myself at Shaka, but it's more of a serious tone. We're talking about their mind frames and their mentalities and their mindsets and their finances and their investments and things like that. And over here, uh, over there is just much more, uh, many more interviews for people that are already at the highest level that Got you it. could be at. And uh, over here at the food community, we're just trying to give a shot to the younger guys, the younger guys that are coming up as well as also oh. interview the best people in our space. Got you know it. what I mean? Got so Got it. I'm still missing a couple of buckaroos, you know what I mean? That haven't had a chance to come on yet. But uh, everyone's usually down and we're going to get it in. But uh, over there at Shaka, it's looking pretty dope. Good. I mean, this what? no, nah, I'm not even going to say that. Who cares? P bottom line is Shaka shows me massive love and support uh, here at the food community. Me and my partner, you know what I'm saying? On the YouTube side, we do what we do. That being Rich Homie Juan, I have nothing to do with the Instagram other than providing posts of the podcast. You know what Got I'm saying? It. So. When he makes those f lists, I try to give him my opinion because I know I'm going to get blamed for it. He's usually already done with his lists when he tells me he's going to do it. And I try to be like, nah, what about this? And he just says, mm -hmm. he, <laughs> I mean, if it goes with what he's saying, he's cool with it. But if it doesn't, uh, now at this junction, I I don't have to try hard to convince him. I just tell him what it is like, hey, Dick, um. This is yeah. This this and this, you know what I'm saying, or that that and that, and he takes it into deep consideration. So shout out to that fool, because he's used to working alone. 
Yes, he's just used to doing his Instagram posts. Yeah, with he's nobody. used to being in the cut, wherever the fuck it is he lives or doesn't, by himself running his own program. He could be, and this is going to sound so lame, he could be at Starbucks behind you making a scandalous ass post. Or he could be wherever he is in traffic next to you, putting on the next money sign suede or Mexican OT or peso or whomever. All of which individuals can say they attribute some part of their stardom to, to the, the full community. community. You know what I mean? So I'm happy to say that I'm a part of that. And um, <clears throat> do, 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 you, do you think it's helped you? Uh, I want to tell you I'm definitely viral because of the interviews that we conduct. For sure. That's good. I think it's safe to say that. You know what I'm saying? I think it's safe to say... Um, I joined something that had high value and I brought a tremendous amount of high value to it as well. You know what I'm saying? Because you're a hardworking man. So there's that. You know what I'm saying? Can never and take a compliment, guys. We uh we started the indicted, we did the food community. I'm getting the sponsors, we're doing what we're doing, we're hosting events, we're conducting the some of the biggest interviews you could possibly imagine. And what um, about now? What about what about the color brown? So the color brown, I decided months ago to start that so we made the pages we made the youtube we made the instagram we made the facebook we made the email we made all of that months ago uh when i had a little bit more time and then obviously things picked up in other areas so we weren't able to pursue it but uh, i wanted you to be able to uh interview people outside of the prison aspect because you always say i wish i could interview this person or this or that or we've had opportunities to interview other people but they hadn't gone to prison and those were like squandered opportunities because those people were popular themselves you know what i mean yes and, and fun fact about my husband every time i say oh i wish this or i want to do this he like tries to make it happen and sometimes i regret saying certain things because it's like won't stop until he gets it done and it's like Oh, we're going because it's like just because I wish or I wanted to do something doesn't mean I really wanted to do it. I don't mean the interviews and things like that. Just in like just like little things, you know, anything. But here we are. So, yeah. So uh, the color brown, I'll be helping my wife conduct interviews because I could. You know what I'm saying? We're also shooting it a different way. Uh, the way we shoot the food community is different than the way we film indicted. I mean, obviously, you know that. They don't know that, though. I mean, there's obviously a different camera angle. There's some technical shit behind the scenes that we do differently. Whatever. Point is, is I'm if there's an available mic. There could always be an available mic, but I just feel like it's unnecessary for me to conduct the indicted interviews with you. That's your shit. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Just like I do my shit. But now uh, I'm going to help her do this. You know what I'm saying? So this and is our thing. Pretty much, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm pretty sure we'll still do uh, Ike and Tina here and there on the food community, maybe, probably. See what's up. I think not, guys. I think we will do Ike and Tina here, probably. We'll see how it all plays out. But neither that's neither here nor there yeah. because we are still both part of the food community. Obviously, I sure the fuck am. And you have no choice, so there's that. But, uh, yeah, so here we are. We're just trying to strive for greatness. Um. I don't know. Yeah. What else? Is there anything else you should ask me that you didn't ask me? I don't know. Let me look at my list. <clears throat> what about you, Marlon? You have any questions back there, pal? You don't have to say it into the mic. You can just say it for her to ask me. What? <laughs> oh, there are none anymore. Pizza loca. Already, I asked you everything. Where you grew up, where you raised, raised you, your mom, dad. You know, your, was your dad in your life? How old were you when you had your son? I basically asked you everything. Obviously, what is your favorite food? We already know. Uh, my favorite food is pizza. Even Cupid knows. Um, are People already know who your favorite rapper is. Who's my favorite rapper? Tupac's. Yeah, Drake. probably Tupac or Drake. He loves Drake. Uh, yeah, I don't need to ask him no rap questions. This is not the full community. This is not no other. This is you, you know? What do you, do you think I should have asked you something? I don't know. I'm lost in the sauce. I got a lot of shit going on. What time is it? It's time for us to go. Yeah. Yeah, I probably need to accept the collab posts from Shocker right now because they dropped something. And what time are we dropping our episode? Right now-ish. So, yeah, we're going to... Oh, yeah, we're dropping an episode right now. So, yeah, we're we're, we're out. Sorry, close it already? Uh, before we go, I want to give a huge, huge shout out to Royalty Honey. Make sure you guys go pick up your Royalty Honey at Royalty Honey USA. Check the link in the description. 
Um, that's my motherfucking homie. Shout out to that fool. Use code Negra, I guess. Yeah, use code Negra. Use code Negra for twenty percent off. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to Ale Kush. When I reached out to Ale Kush, shout out to Trin. You know what I'm saying? That's my girl. Shout out to the home girl. Looked out. You know what I'm saying? So that's righteous to have her as a sponsor. And shout out to all you guys that uh, are coming from all of our various platforms to see what we got popping. We highly, highly appreciate it. Um, more than you know, because growing a channel is a b and getting followers and things like that to come on board and believe in something is a mission. You know what I mean? So we're glad you we're glad you guys enjoy our content. Expect a lot, lot more. We conducted an interview with uh, Susana. What's her name? Linwood. Linwood today she has Earlier. um a crazy sad story i'm still kind of emotional from it right now if you speak she was crazy um i cried yeah man and we look forward to doing a lot a lot of uh other popular black and brown people really black people are brown people you know what i'm saying so expect some just expect wide um, a wide array of interviews from across the board they're not always going to be rappers not everyone is going to be famous yeah, our brown people, you, me, my son, my sister, your mom, your sister. Who knows? Anybody that is brown that is wants to share their story, you know, whatever. And I also want to say that everything my husband said, like, he is the one that is really good with words. I appreciate you guys. And he's the one, he's the good, he's the one with good with words. I am not that good. I don't even know how I even do this, guys. But thank you so much, you guys, for your support. Like he said, that's it. Uh-huh. All right, you guys. Uh, yeah, we just want to give a shout out to everyone that f I already said all that. Um, and yeah, we look forward to dropping a lot more content. Please make sure you guys follow us on Instagram. Please make sure you guys like and subscribe. And subscribe and comment. We highly appreciate it. And yeah. Oh, that's it, you guys. See you guys soon.